On the news tonight, INEC extends permanent voters cards collection deadline till February 11. In business, federal government targets 70% broadband penetration by 2021. And on the foreign scene, South African president announces May as a date, May 8 as date for general election. A very lovely evening to you. Many thanks for joining us in our flagship news tonight on Super Screen Television. I am Precious Amayu and we'll begin tonight with a report that the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has extended deadline for the collection of permanent voters' card PVCs scheduled to end February 8, 2019 to Monday 11, February 8, Monday 11, 2019, nationwide. INEC Chairman Mahmoud Yakubu, who disclosed this at the regular meeting with resident electoral commissioners in Abuja, said the collection of PVCs will now take place from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily, including Saturday and Sunday. Mahmoud also said after the deadline, all uncollected PVCs will be recorded and deposited with the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, for keeping until after the general elections when the collection of cards and continuous registration of voters will resume. The commission is ready for the elections. Nevertheless, we are ever ready to fine tune our processes and procedures in order to serve Nigerians better. In the last couple of days, we have been inundated by calls from Nigerians to review the current process of collection of the permanent voters' card. The response the Commission has taken the following decisions. Number one, the collection of PVCs scheduled to end today, Friday 8 February 2019, is hereby extended nationwide to Monday 11 February 2019. This will include Saturday and Sunday. And now on to the industrial action embarked upon by ASU. The Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, has suspended its three months old strike after exhaustive deliberations during its meeting with the federal government. The president of the union, Professor Biodo Nguyemi, who made the announcement in Abuja, said the strike was suspended after the union made extensive consultations through its final level of consultation of the National Executive Council, which took place February 6th to 7th. The indefinite strike, which commenced on Sunday, 4th November 2018, is demanding for improved funding of universities and implementation of previous agreements with the government, among other issues. And still on the ASU strike, meanwhile, the federal government has commended the academic staff unions of universities ASU for its patience and understanding after it suspended its three-month strike. 
Minister of Labor and Employment, Chris Ngige, who disclosed this to journalists in Abuja, said after a meeting with ASU President Biodun Guyemi, eight areas of disagreement were discussed and resolved by the two parties. According to Ngige, they have dealt with all the eight contending issues and some of them have been implemented. The minister also said that on the issue of salary shortfall in the universities, the federal government has released 16 billion naira, out of which 15.384 billion naira is for universities, while the rest is for other tertiary institutions. And now the Lagos state government has backtracked on its earlier decision to close some roads ahead of President Muhammadu Buhari's campaign in the state on Saturday. In a press statement signed by the Chief Press Secretary Habib Aruna, the state's Commissioner for Transportation, Ladi Lawansin, said the earlier statement announcing diversion and road closure had been has been reviewed and residents are now free to go about their businesses. He also said adequate arrangements has been conf confirmed to ensure that the free flow of traffic and the residents should respect tight security around the route which the president is expected to pass through in the course of his visit and the venue of the rally. And the Supreme Court has upheld the High Court judgment that Abinisho barred the All Progressive Congress APC from conducting its world, local government, and state congresses in River State, pending the determination of a suit that was filed by 22 aggrieved chieftains of the party. The aggrieved party members are on May 11, 2018 had on May 11, 2018, secured an interim injunction from a high court in Port Harcourt, which restrained the APC from going ahead with the indirect primaries that held on May 19, 20, and 21st, respectively, which produced Tony Cole as governorship candidate and other candidates to represent the party in the 2019 general elections. The APC had, through its lawyer, Latif Fagbemi, begged the Supreme Court to clear legal impediments against its list of candidates that contained Cole's name. And still on party politics, the Allied Congress Party of Nigeria, ACPN, has demanded that its former presidential candidate, Obi Ezekwisili, returns all the money generated during her short stay in the party or risk legal action. National Chairman of the party, Ghani Ugaladima, who made this known to journalists in Abuja, said the party rejected the defense made by Ezekwisili, who had accused the leadership of greed and desperation for money. Galadima also said that a political party is different from a charity organization or the Bring Back Our Girls movement, adding that she is expected to respond at the appropriate time. Now the All Progressives Congress, APC, in Aqua Ibom State has called for the redeployment of the state's resident electoral commissioner, REC, Mike Igini, over alleged partisanship in the election. Chairman and Secretary of the Party in the state, Ini Okopido, and Augustine Ikanem, who disclosed this in a statement, expressed a lack of confidence in him. The APC also claimed that the ROEC is working with the state governor, Udom Emmanuel, to manipulate the election in favor of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in the state. Reacting to claims by political parties, Igini assured that the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, is committed to deliver a free, fair, and credible election. He advised all political parties to be actively involved in election collation by setting up their situation rooms. The Federal High Court in Lagos has declared a former governor of your state, Rashid Lajuda, and a former commissioner for finance, Wahid Akombi, not guilty of the 4.7 billion naira fraud allegations leveled against them by the EFCC. At the hearing of the case today, Justice Mohammed Idris said the prosecution is not consistent with the amount of money missing from the sale of the Oyo state government's shares. The court thereafter found them not guilty of all the 11 counts. And in the education sector, the National Examinations Council, NECO, has released the results of the 2018 November-December Senior School Certificate Examination, SSC. Acting Registrar of NECO, Abu Bakar Ghana, who disclosed this in a statement, said 37,069 candidates representing 62.48% of the 59,963 candidates who sat for the examination got five credits and above in both English language and mathematics. 
Further analysis of the result showed that 44,497 candidates got either distinction or credit in English, while 47,151 candidates got either distinction or credit in mathematics. It also indicated that 47,031 candidates got five credits and above, irrespective of English, English language or mathematics. And coming up in business. Federal government targets 70% broadband penetration by 2021. Details on this and more on the business scene when we return. Do stay with us. watching Super Screen flagship news at 8. Many thanks for staying with us now in business. The federal government says it will strive to grow the country's broadband penetration to 70% by 2021 with a $100 million loan from the government of India. Minister of Communication Adeba Yoshitu and Executive Vice Chairman of the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC, Umaro Dambata, disclosed this in Abuja while applauding the federal government's efforts in moving from 18 to 31 percent broadband connectivity between 2015 and 2019 she too said a lot still needs to be done to attain greater fits the minister also said within the last three years nigeria has attained 31 percent from 18 percent it was for five years before the present government came in and now the federal government is set to approve the settlement of 350 billion naira exporters credit through the issuance of the promissory note. Executive Director of Nigerian Export Promotion Council, NEPC, Olusegun Awolowo, who disclosed this to journalists in Abuja, said R President Muhammad Buhari will soon be launching the new export credit certificate and the promissory note certificate, which would serve as an incentive to exporters. According to him, it will help to restore confidence in the system, as well as increase export target by 20% before the end of the year. Awolowo also said the council is complying with the directives of the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission, ICPC, adding that the NEPC must not be found engaging in corrupt practices due to the need to boost investors' confidence. And on tax matters, the Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, says it will collaborate with other stakeholders like the Nigeria Police Force, NPF, and go after wealthy tax defaulters. Executive Chairman, FIRS, Tunde Fowler, made this known in Abuja when the Acting Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, paid a courtesy visit to the Revenue House. According to him, the service will go after another set of over 40 thousand millionaire tax defaulters in 2019. He requested the Nigeria police force to assist the service to bring the tax defaulters to book. Fowler also commended the NPF for his support and collaboration over the years, which he said had helped FRS, FIRS to achieve its targets. And that does it for business, but still ahead on the foreign scene. South African President announces May 8 as a date for general elections. Details on this and more on the international scene and sports when we return. Join us again.